Who is the single most impressive athlete sports person of all time? Story 1, Wayne Gretzky. Number 1 career points total in the NHL. You need to add almost 1,000 points to the player in second place, Jaromir Jagr, to beat him. If he didn't score a single goal in his entire career, he would still have most points. He has first, second, third, and fourth in terms of points per season. He also has fifth, sixth, seventh, ninth, and tenth. There have been only three players who have over 100 assists in a single season. Orr and Lemieux both achieved it once each. Wayne Gretzky did it for 11 consecutive seasons. Edit. Two more players have managed it this season, which is equally as wild. Nikita Kucherov and Connor McDavid. He could have ended his career with a 16-season point-scoring drought and still be a point-per-game player. Him alone is second in terms of collective points scored by a family. The only group to beat him were the six members of the Sutter family, and even then it was only by 73. In terms of dominating a single sport, he's up there with only a handful who can challenge him. Story 2. The only correct answer here is an amateur who didn't compete at all. Terry Fox. 21-year-old, one-legged cancer patient who ran 3,339 miles across Canada in 143 days before dying to raise money and awareness for cancer research. That is nearly a full marathon each day, every day for 143 days, on one leg, while dying from cancer. No other athlete will ever come close to that legacy. Story 3, Simone Biles is the absolute goat. A woman standing at not even one, 5M tall, Built of muscle, ginormous balls and sass, most decorated gymnast in the history of time, having five skills named after her, each of which bear the highest level of difficulty achievable, one even unlocking a new difficulty category. Excelling at gymnastics, head and shoulders above the rest, taking an enormous pile of shit after putting her mental health first, after getting the pressure of the whole world on her shoulders, and this after helping put a serial child molester behind bars. And all this while still remaining diplomatic, kind, and supportive to fans. She had to battle racism, sexism, and so much pressure. She opened her own gym in order to let other young gymnasts escape the toxic and dangerous environment that gymnastics gyms often are. Simone smiling doesn't win you gold medals. Biles will always have a special place in my heart. Story 4. Babe Diedrichsen Zaharias. At a time when there weren't exactly tons of women's sports opportunities, she won three medals two of the gold at the 1932 Olympics, and one each in a running, jumping, and throwing event. No other person has ever won individual medals in all three types of events. She's best known for golf. She didn't rack up tons of big wins until later in life because there weren't really pro opportunities for women until she was already in her late 30s, but she still won 10 majors at a time when only three existed. Prior to the existence of the LPGA and its predecessor, she managed to qualify for and make the cut in multiple PGA Tour events, and remains the only women ever to make the cut in one. This is all in addition to a first athletic exploit playing on an amateur basketball team before her track exploits and appearing as a pitcher in a couple of MLB spring training games. That's all pretty damn amazing in general. And she did it in a pre-title ninth world where there wasn't a lot of infrastructure for women to learn and compete in athletic endeavors. I'm sure there are plenty of people who are better, but in terms of being impressive, She's pretty tough to top. Story 5. The fact that I don't see Wilt Chamberlain mentioned is a damn crime. He was completely dominant in his basketball career, where they had to change rules to try and tone him down. He was insanely fast and ran marathons after his basketball career was over. Hell, there was even a rumor that Arnold Schwarzenegger lifted weights with him once while they were filming Conan and refused to do so afterwards because he was so freakishly strong. Story 6. Kelly Slater. I know nobody cares about professional surfing, but he is far more dominant than anyone else in their sport, and it will never be repeated. From the Olympic website, he holds nearly every significant record in the sport, with 11 world titles, 55 event victories, and the record for being both the youngest and oldest men's world champion. Slater claimed his first world title as a 20-year-old in 1992 and won his last at 39 in 2011. Story 7. Unbelievable. I haven't seen Don Bradman on this list yet. 99.94 career batting average in test cricket. The next highest average in the history of the game is Adam Vogel at 61.87. Most of the records he set in the sport during his career that ended in 1949 are unbroken to this day. Complete insanity. Story 8. I don't know Jack about swimming, but I do know Michael Phelps. Most decorated Olympian of all time. 28 medals and 23 gold medals.
All-time record for gold medals and the first to get eight golds at the 2008 Olympics set over 29 world records. At one point, he held all records for 200 freestyle, 100 and 200 butterfly, 200 individual medley, and 400 individual medley. At 19, he won five golds and two bronzes at the 2004 Olympics. The second person would be Roger Federer. I can list a lot of things, but I'll always remember him as that 19-year-old who beat 29-year-old, four-time defending champion and all-time Grand Slam leader Pete Sampras in the fourth round in 2001. Third for me would be a personal bias, LeBron James. Story 9. If we're including bodybuilding as a sport, Arnold Schwarzenegger, five Mr. Universe wins, seven Olympias, wrote the literal book on how to train. That was the sport's Bible for a solid three decades and is still good info today. He popularized the sport worldwide and was the president's ambassador for a nationwide fitness program and was probably the biggest influencer ever in getting regular people into the gym to work out. Oh, and he parlayed that bodybuilding success into becoming the world's biggest movie star, married into U.S. political royalty, and eventually won the governorship of California, even winning re-election. And he is also the title sponsor of the Arnold Sports Festival, the second most prestigious event in the sports of both bodybuilding and strongman any given year. He's done more to popularize strength sports than anybody ever, with maybe the exception of his mentor, Joe Weider. Story 10, John Surtees. John Norman Surtees, CBE, the 11th of February, 1934, the 10th of March, 2017, one, was a British Grand Prix motorcycle road racer and Formula One driver. On his way to become a seven-time Grand Prix motorcycle world champion, he won his first title in 1956 and followed with three consecutive doubles between 1958 and 1960, winning six world championships in both the 500 and 350 cc classes. Surtees then made the move to the pinnacle of motorsport, the Formula One World Championship, and in 1964 made motor racing history by becoming the Formula One World Champion. To this day, Surtees remains the only person to have won world championships on both two and four wheels. He founded the Surtees Racing Organization team that competed as a constructor in Formula One, Formula Two, and Formula 5000 from 1970 to 1978. He was also the ambassador of the Racing Steps Foundation. Story 11, Jim Thorpe. No one I have ever known could walk into any sport, compete, and win, except for Jim Thorpe. Olympic gold medalist, professional football the precursor to the NFL, professional baseball, MLB, professional basketball, ice hockey, lacrosse, tennis, professional boxing, handball, track, and field. There are a few people who played two or three sports and did good. Bo Jackson and Michael Jordan come to mind. Jim Thorpe also played when racism was in full swing. He was a Native American. Story 12, Tom Brady. The fact that he played until 45 alone is a miracle, but at the level he played, unbelievable. Seven Super Bowls, that's more than any franchise in the NFL. He owns like half of the QB records, some of which will likely never be beaten. Won Super Bowls on two different teams, played in 10 Super Bowls. He essentially went every other year of his career. And other than Gronkowski and a few seasons with Moss, he never really had a number one receiver. The guy got it done with a former lacrosse player. I know football is a team sport, they all are. But to me, that just further proves his greatness. He never played with the same exact team twice. And oftentimes... There was quite a lot of turnover and focus on the defense while he was given second-rate players. Story 13. I feel like people underestimate how powerful of a puncher Mike Tyson was in his heyday. He was, and I think still is, in the Guinness World Records for strongest punching arm ever. The amount of joules of energy his punches do is equivalent to getting shot with four 9mm bullets, which is insane for someone to be able to say they can punch harder than a gun can shoot. Not sure if he's the most impressive athlete, but that's damn impressive in my opinion. Story 14. LeBron James. 20-plus years in the league with no show of decline in terms of talent and performance. That shit needs to be studied. Arguably the greatest to ever play the game. Was in the spotlight from a young age and didn't go absolutely insane like majority of celebrities who are exposed to fame at a young age. No scandals throughout his whole career. Like seriously, how? Started charities, gives back, has a family and kids. Bro is literally winning on all levels. Can't think of many other athletes with this type of resume. Everyone has their own opinions and that's fine. Just can't think of anyone else to do it all like LBJ has done. Story 15, Russ Cook, a.k.a. Hardest Geezer. He's just finished running the entire length of Africa from South Africa to Tunisia. 
An absolutely crazy distance every day, going through some real hardship on the way, physical and logistical. The YouTube series was genuinely one of the best, most interesting things I've ever watched. So inspiring. Sure, it could have been done faster and more efficiently with a professional team and proper logistical support. But the amateur nature of it being just him with some friends driving some knackered vehicles in support is what made it special. He's also raised over one million pounds for charity in doing it. An absolutely phenomenal achievement. Story 16. I see a lot of people on here who are famous and some who are rightfully so popular and incredibly influential to people and the sport. But I want to note that Travis Pastrana is a professional in multiple sports and incredible good at each of them. Motocross, freestyle motocross, rallycross, and other extreme sports. Not only does it take extreme athleticism, determination, guts, balls, ability to overcome fear and push the boundaries to new levels in all sports that he does. Story 17, Tiger Woods, Immo. When it comes to golf, it's a single-person sport, bar rider cups and such. But most of his records came from when he played stroke play. You're also against over 100 different opponents all trying to win in every comp you play. It's not one, one, and you don't have teammates to cover for you when you have a bad day. To dominate the sport the way he did for so long and to break the records he did, it'll never, ever, ever be seen again. Story 18. I hate to throw a golfer in here, but Tiger Woods, in his prime, is hands down the most impressive athlete I've ever seen in my lifetime. I can't say he's the golf goat because there's a rightful argument to be made for Jack with lifetime accomplishments, major count and all. But I don't think there will ever be a golfer as good as Tiger was in his prime. Some of the shots Tiger pulled off back then were just incredible to even attempt, and he pulled them off. If he really wanted to win something, he won it and usually by a pretty decent margin. Story 19, Theogenes of Thesos. First, maybe only, Olympic wreath holder in both boxing and pancration, undefeated in 1,300 bouts over 22 years, and a champion long-distance runner on top of that. They built a bronze statue of him after he passed, and when a graffiti artist tried to deface it, the statue fell over killing him, meaning he was crushing his opponents even after he died. In the modern era, Probably Bo Jackson or Phelps. Story 20. I'm upset there hasn't been any mention of Francis Ngannou. This man illegally crossed several countries, including jumping barbed wire fences to leave his home country of Cameroon to make it to Spain, where there is no extradition treaty for his country. Living homeless in a parking garage, he got free boxing lessons. Eventually, he transitioned into MMA, where he became the UFC heavyweight champion. After the left the organization, Without ever having competed in boxing before, he went on to box Tyson Fury, whom many people consider the best HW boxer of all time, and took him to decision in his first ever match. He knocked down Tyson Fury in his first boxing match. I would say there would be a movie about this man's life one day, but audiences genuinely wouldn't believe it was a true story. My heart breaks for him. First his loss to Anthony Joshua this year, a devastating KO, but now he just experienced the loss of his 18-month-old son. You can be the scariest man in the world, but there's some challenges in life you just can't conquer. My words mean nothing but all my love to the Nunganu family. Story 21. A person that never gets thought of on these lists is Kale Sanderson. Went 159-0 while wrestling at Iowa State University. Four straight individual NCAA Division I championships. Went on to win a gold medal at 2004 Olympics at 84 kilograms. Went on to become the current head wrestling coach at Penn State with an overall record of 247-26-2. Penn State has 11 first-place team finishes in the NCAA championships under Sanderson. Sanderson has coached 40 individual national champions. It's an absolutely insane career that's comparable to MJ in his field, and I'm an Iowa fan. Story 22. While it's a really niche sport, I'd like to take the opportunity of this thread to highlight Swiss athlete Kriegel Maurer. Hike and fly paragliding races involve competitors being told to get from A to B with nothing but their running shoes and their paraglider, foil wing that fits in a backpack. The world championship of this sport is the X Alps, a race over 1,000 km in length where athletes are asked to race non-stop with limited time for sleeping, across the entirety of the European Alps. It's regarded by some as the toughest adventure race on Earth. Maurer has won this thing for the past eight races. In other words, he has been the uncontested world champion for 16 years in a row. It's hard to put Kriegel on the same podium as these other athletes, but it's an accomplishment that can't be overlooked. Story 23. Paul Robeson really was a renaissance man by every definition. 
He smashed records in football, achieving varsity letters in not just football, but basketball, baseball, and track. He was awarded All-American in football twice, in his junior and senior year. After graduating valedictorian from Rutgers, Robeson played in the precursor to the NFL while attending Columbia Law School. Not only was Robeson an enigmatic athlete, but he went on to be a world-renowned musician and actor. He was deeply involved in the Harlem Renaissance and a staunch supporter of civil rights. Unfortunately, due to the Red Scare of the McCarthy era, much of Robeson's legacy was erased due to his subversive politics. Story 24. I doubt it'll be mentioned here, but they deserve their respect. Stone Cold. Steve Austin was the biggest wrestler on the planet during his time, and 20 years after retirement, he is still near the top for merchandise. Undertaker is the greatest of all time for not breaking kayfabe. He did break a handful of times, but his career lasted three decades. Mick Foley will probably never be touched as far as mass appeal, characters, and putting his body on the line. Shawn Michaels is, in my opinion, the greatest of all time for a combination of everything it takes to be a wrestler. Amazing athleticism in the ring, brilliant mic work, and a look that was good enough for a photo shoot with Playboy magazine. And even after the flack he took for it, he incorporated that image into his character. And last on the list, Brock Lesnar. The explosive power that he had during his time was simply amazing. In an industry packed with absolute tanks, He's always mentioned as a huge guy that could move with insane speed, but also pick up anyone like it was nothing. Story 25. My personal all-time favorite, nothing to do with having a crush on her at all, uh -huh. Ulrika Meifarth. Came out of nowhere at 16 years old to win Olympic gold, equalizing the world record in the process. The moment she cleared the bar and the stadium erupted is forever the most goosebumpy memory in all of sports for me. She then had a career marred by injuries and competition with blatantly chemically enhanced Eastern Bloc rivals, flopped 76, missed 80 by boycott, soldiered on and made it to LA 84 without much hope or fanfare, and just went and flippin' did it again, 10 centimeters higher than in Munich, still the only athlete to win the same single Olympic track and field event 12 years apart. She is also both the youngest and the oldest champion of the event. Story 26 LeBron James still to this day hasn't fucked up once. No arrests, drug offenses, traffic tickets, nothing. Still married to his high school sweetheart. He's spending his billions feeding and educating poor kids. And he's the highest scoring player in NBA history. To do that in today's day and age is the most respectable thing I've ever seen from a pro athlete. Story 27. Alex Honnold, hands down. Records don't mean shit compared to free soloing El Capitan, 3,000 feet. Where one mistake means certain death. It's a mind-boggling feat. If we didn't have video proof and you took any person of sound mind to the base of that rock and told them, yeah, some guy climbed all the way to the top once with no rope, Noon would believe you. It's impossible, and you'd have to be insane to even attempt it. Noon will be able to replicate what Alex did. Story 28. Outside of boxing, few know the name of Salvador Sanchez. He was an incredible athlete, though. His cardio was off the charts. He would run 15 miles every day at 4.30 a.m., then he would have breakfast, then train, followed by swimming to rest up. He would box full speed for a round, then he would sit, and in 30 seconds, his heart was back to a normal resting rate in the 60s. He also beat four future Hall of Famers. He was champion of the featherweight division and basically cleaned up the entire division. His last bout was a victory against a future boxing legend, Azuma Nelson, who would not lose for another 14 years. Oh yeah, and Sanchez did all of this at a mere 23 years old. He was killed in a car accident.